telling me speak. You are so
Father, we do thank you for tonight and ask your blessing, your help, Lord Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's going to talk out of my heart tonight, and you may get tired of that in a few services, but but God will get us back where we're supposed to be. The Lord's also told me to let him pastor the church a while. I'll just preach if y'all don't care. I'll let him do the other stuff for a while. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> this means I'm going to trust him a lot more. I'm not going to feel like i got to do everything right now. I'm just going to trust him. If somebody's dying, I'll go. If somebody needs prayer, I'll pray. We'll do those things because he does them for you. But I'm not going to feel like i got to keep this thing rolling or going. Or I'm not going to carry that right now. Well, I'm going to tell you tonight, I ain't never told anybody else in my life. And I'm going to tell you, the Lord just moved on me a minute ago to open my mouth, so I guess I will. And it's good Michael's not here because I'll just tell you that uh, most of this started a few months ago after service one day when might as well say he just had to talk, but he don't tell you that he just talk around circles for a long period of time. I tell you, you need to start looking and open your eyes and open your ears. When people talk to you for a long period of time, it's usually because they got something they really want to say that they just ain't found a way to... Oh. And he'll talk on and on about stuff that makes no difference. And then by the time you're completely exhausted, just completely exhausted, then they'll open their mouth and say what they actually meant to say that day in the parking lot when he got saved he talked nearly an hour about nothing almost an hour about nothing about cars about this about the roof about all the stuff in the world that makes no difference and then he wanted to know Jesus I'm going to let the train pass we're not in no hurry at least I'm not we're not going to go long tonight When he got saved, God told me he was a prototype of what God was going to do in my ministry in the future. He told me to pray for him after he got saved harder than when he got saved. I tell you, you need to do that for people. We try and try to get them to come to Jesus, and then when they get there, we don't realize they're going to need just as much prayer as they did before they got there. Because a lot of people say, oh, they got saved now, now everything's just fine. Everything's under the blood. All you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says you are, but you're just carrying a lot of baggage. And God wants to help people not just come to Him and get saved, but come to Him and get free from stuff. Lazarus was in that grave. <laughs> the devil thought him had him, thought him had him. Been in there four days. Absolutely sure he had him. Then Jesus came along. And when Jesus came along, he messed up the devil's plans because he called Lazarus by name and told him to come out. And Jesus came by one day and he called me by name. And I came out and he called you by name. And you came out, but you came out just like old Lazarus, wrapped up in grave clothes. Things from that old dead way of life hanging on you. Stuff that you did and stuff other people did, but stuff holding you and then Jesus said, loose them. You hear me? And let them go. I don't know how to loose them. Go. You let God figure out how. You just go. So I prayed for him for a long time. I'd, I'd fast for him. I don't fast for many people in the world, but I'd fast for him every Monday morning. That's how strong I felt that God was doing something, but it wasn't done. And I don't mean they didn't get saved, because there was a great change. See, and that's what happens. We get mad at people when they backslide instead of pray and fast and seek God for them. You need to seek God for them just as much after they get saved as you did before, till Christ gets formed in them, it says in Galatians, until that, that it's real soft and pliable, it's like a baby's head that's not grown together yet. You remember that? You used to tell the other kids, don't whack them on the head. I got that soft. Oh. And it don't mean we want them to get hard, but we want them to get set. So you pray for them and you seek God for them and do that for each other because we're not all formed yet. 
Some of us are so hard, God's got to melt us and reform us. But as God started to work on these things, nothing seemed to happen for about a year. A little bit would happen, a little bit wouldn't happen. And then we got to the place where that one day he come and stood after church and and, and, and and didn't tell me, you know, what was going on. I don't remember if Nelda was with us or if I had to send her on home or what happened. I don't know. But it's one of those deals where I just knew I couldn't leave. Because he had to tell me something. When people tell you they got to tell you something, it's time to run. Because people will tell you anything. Why will they tell you anything? Because anything has happened to them. It is usually a lot to the store. And once it starts coming out, it comes out. But we were sitting here, so whatever, I think we was here, and I think we was right back there. I don't remember exactly. I know we was both places. Because the conversation took a long I don't know that what he said this morning he finally had to tell me. That's what he had. He had to tell somebody. And that ain't an easy thing for anybody to tell anybody. It's not an easy thing for a guy to tell anybody, absolutely for sure. But he felt like he just couldn't get rid of it unless he said something to somebody. And there's more than what he told. I purposely whispered in his ear this morning, told him he didn't have to tell everything. Well, why not tell everything? Because some stuff you just don't need to hear. There's parts of your story that you don't want nobody to hear. There's parts of your story that's nobody else's business. Just the truth. You can tell people what happened without telling them too much. The devil gets in the details. That's just the truth. But he didn't think he could tell anybody else on this planet. He didn't know of anybody he could tell. So the devil had him in bondage. There's always somebody you can tell. Beware of not being able to tell anybody anything. It's all fine. We're saved. Jesus loves us. But they're going to think of me different now now that they know. So we don't tell. Because we don't tell, the enemy is able to keep us in chains. Fear. Memories. Torment. All that stuff. But he told the safest person he could ever tell outside of Jesus because he had no way of knowing that I'd been through exactly the same things. He sure didn't know because I told him. Because I told him nothing. I just loved him, told him it was all right, prayed with him, told him all the right things to say that, well, it wasn't your fault. Then what could you have done? All the right things to say. Because, see, that's half the story is what happened to you. The other half the story is when things happen to you, it causes you to want to do things to other people. But things just run like that. And with things, with those things and those, and the devil moves in those areas, it is very difficult to tell anybody. Because if you tell anybody, you're automatically guilty just because you were tempted. You're automatically guilty. And if it's something just like drinking, it ain't no big deal. Daddy drank, mama drank, everybody drank, pass it on down, nobody says a word. But when it gets down to other type subjects, then all of a sudden, everybody's got to keep their mouth shut. Because things like that just started happening yesterday. They didn't happen 30 years ago and 40 years ago. Things like that just happened on the news the other day. Stuff has been going on for all time. Sometimes we just don't, well, we like to put it away in our back closet of stuff that we don't put in our testimonies. See, I, you know, I was talking to somebody who used to know out to prison a few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever, on the phone. We were talking about our testimony. I asked him, which one does he share? And he says, yeah. I said, yeah, which one do you share? I said, I always share my PG version. <laughs> he says, that's right. I've got a G version, a PG, and an R. And I said, yeah. And he said, i got an X, too. So that's right. So you got to well, which one... Which testimony do you tell? Well, it depends on who I'm talking to at the time. Hey, G audiences can't handle the, the, the R and X versions, buddy. But because I'm a pastor, I had to listen to the bad version. Knowing it was killing him to tell me. And him not telling, because I sure wasn't going to tell. 
but I'd been through the same thing. I wasn't going to tell anybody that. I wasn't going to tell anybody that I'd fought with that and it had messed my life up, my son. Because Jesus come in and saved me, but it just didn't seem to go away. Come in when I was a little kid. Before you even know to resist. See, the devil's a child molester. That's who the child molester is. It's not who touched you. It's not who left you there that should have known better. It's the devil. He wants to kill and steal and destroy. And he'll do it to kids. He don't care if they're a year old or six months old or 12 months old or two years old or 15 or 30. He don't care. He hates you. He hates me. He hates everybody. And he especially hates those that believe in Jesus. So he's the first one that'll do something to you and then blame you for it the rest of your life. Blame you for stuff that you didn't even understand was wrong at the time. And what I want to say tonight, and I'll say it in a few ways in this back. <coughs> but when God moves on your heart to tell somebody something, sometimes you just need to do it because it's not always for you. See, that's just the piece of the puzzle is that you're telling somebody so you can get some help. That you want prayer. That you need somebody to stand with you. You need some person to look at you and say, it wasn't your fault. See, that's a piece of it. I was able to do that for him because I knew it wasn't his fault because I could look and see that it wouldn't help me now. His fault. So why couldn't I see the same thing for me? See, that's the thing. We can't see it in ourselves. We can look right at somebody else and say, well, you couldn't help that. Why would you feel that? Oh. But see, God will have you tell stuff and work through stuff, not just so that you can get relief, freedom, deliverance, peace of mind over things that have happened. God just got this sneaky way of sending somebody to talk to you about something that you have got buried very deep of your own. And I don't want to tell it when he's sitting here, but if he wouldn't have done that, I would have never had to deal with the things in my life that happened like that. God used somebody else's weakness and problem to shine the light on things that I've had hid for so long. So far back, you couldn't even remember when it happened. Just pieces of it, just little things that go by, and all of a sudden you say, you know, that wasn't right. Just little things that come, and you say, oh, that is what was going on, and I didn't even know it. So my parents sat for years and talked about one of the children was abused, and I always thought it was somebody else. See, that's what happens when you're in a big family. You just automatically think it's somebody Or you find out they told you half the story that both of you were abused and they just forgot to tell you because you were standing there so they're going to tell about the other one. So that's a big family. And after all, you'll grow up and you won't remember it. And it won't affect your life. After all, it, it wasn't no big deal. That just happened back in the 60s. Shoot, this is year 2002 nearly. How in the world could something that went on in the early 60s ever be a problem to them? Now look, they turned out all right after all. Just how could it be a problem? And the problem is that the devil wants to kill, to steal, and to destroy. See, and God turns what the devil means for evil into good. I was able to tell Michael from the bottom of my heart that it wasn't his fault. I knew that. I could tell him that God loved him. I could tell him that God was going to help him. I could tell him all those things. But to tell him that, I had to look at myself. I had to know, could that be so for me? And it put me in a situation Where because God cleared that up in his life, he was able to surrender his heart to the call of God to preach. 
He was able to, he knew he was supposed to, but he didn't think he could do it with that kind of baggage. To which I had no doubt about, because I know you can carry a lot of baggage and preach the gospel. Carry it a lot. It'll give you empathy for people. It'll give you compassion for people. It'll let you know how people feel. Yeah, but that's in people God's going to help. That's in people God's going to do stuff for. But you're you. You just have to carry this stuff around. And you're not lying when you say God loves you. You're not lying when you say God will do anything for anybody. You're just struggling with it yourself. So we started getting together on Tuesday nights for his benefit. It's truly what it was. What was we going? What was we going to do? Well, we was going to teach him how to study the Bible because that's what you really got to know. You got to know that Bible. But the side effect happened that he talks along, and we talk about the Bible while, and then about the time it's time to go home, he finally tell you what he's really struggling with again. And you found out that you didn't hear all of it the first time. There was some more, and then there's some more, and then there's some more, and then something else had happened, and that bring up some more. And we met for about I don't know six weeks, maybe a little longer. Sometimes he'd show up, sometimes he wouldn't. I've made jokes about it down here. That's one of the things you do when you're bitter about something. You make jokes about it, by the way. Beware of making jokes about a lot of stuff. You can tell where people's really hurting by what they'll laugh at instead of tell you that it hurts their feelings. But I stuck with it because I knew God was working in him. And I knew that when he got around to it, see, that's what happens. You know, people, oh, they're not in church because they don't want to be. They're not in church because they're afraid God's going to deal with what they're dealing with. They love Jesus. They want to be here too, but they're afraid. Afraid God's going to bring their secret out, going to hit that spot, and God hits them spots a lot more than we want to admit He does. So we just stay away. Well, finally, some trouble happened, and He couldn't stay away. He needed God a lot worse than He thought He did. So we was, we were praying one night, and God was really helping. Things were coming out. Things that you don't want to deal with were coming out. We prayed a long time. And that's the night God took that thing out of me that had been there since I was a little kid. That was that night. It was just a side effect. Just a total side effect. Spent two or three hours dealing with him and mine went out in about 15 minutes. It just... I just got, got, got in the situation and God tricked me. I'm helping somebody else and God's helping me. What I'm telling you is I've learned so much from that little dumb kid. And don't, let him, don't let him hear me say that, but that's the truth. He don't know enough to come out of rain sometimes. You know that's true. You just like it. Oh, I know he's a good kid. Don't get me wrong. But you know, it's huge. You know, we're the kids. Helpers just like him. They don't, you know, they, just, they don't even know what life is yet. Making decisions going to haunt them the rest of their life, and they don't even know what it's about. They think they do. We did too. But God used the humility that He put in Him when He got saved. A humility that would tell. See, humility is the opposite of pride. Pride will keep you in bondage. Humility might embarrass you, but it'll get you free. And God used that humility of him opening his mouth and telling me those things that I would never tell anybody to encourage me that if he could do it, I could too. He wrote me an email one night and said, I want you to, he says, I encourage you. That's why, yeah, just a kid don't want to come out of rain. God still puts words in his mouth. I used to be the same way. You sound a lot older than your years when God speaks through you. So I want to encourage you to open up your heart before the Lord. To open up your heart before Him. Let Him show you things you can tell my people. Things that will help other people. He said, I, I, don't, I don't never want to tell all of my testimony, but if it made the difference in somebody being saved, I'd do it. I wrote him back a nice letter and told him that was fine. You better be careful who you tell what to. I've been through this in life. And I told him if it come down to telling somebody getting saved, I'd do it too. But it better be God. 
Because <laughs> just telling stuff for the fun of it is not going to work. But I couldn't get rid of that phrase, even though I argued about it, that phrase, encourage you to open up your heart to God. Let Him show you what's in there. I thought I knew every ugly thing that was in there, and I didn't. I, I didn't even, like I said, we talked this morning about the bitterness. I didn't know it was there. And every time I find something out, I think, well, that, that's exactly what the problem was. And then I find out none of these problems for that. I, I found out that, you know, I found out that I was abused. I didn't even really ever put it together. I, I found that out. I found out that somebody I loved did it. I stand up here a while ago doing a song service. And this the whole memory of it came back. See, that's what happens. Things just come back. It's all they'll get over. They're too little to know. They were four. They were three. They were whatever. I. <laughs> God's good. That's what he is. But it explains why some of them thoughts are there later in life. And some of those temptations and some of that stuff where you just can't figure out where in the world this ever came from. Can you forgive who did it? Absolutely I can. I know he was abused too. He was just acting out the things that had been done to him. Oh, absolutely. He was just a kid too. How big a kid is none of y'all's business, but he was just a kid. Like I said, I'm just a kid. I'll tell you what, I, was, I don't think I grew up till last year, and I ain't sure I did yet. I'll let you know next year whether I think I grew up this year or not. But I want you to know that, that what he did do, the enemy meant it for evil and God means it for good. For good. The devil uses it for fear. The devil puts those things on you so you feel like these emotions are in you and in your mind and you dream about them and stuff. And you think, well, that, I would, that's not me. I could never do that. I would never do that to anybody, to a grown person, to a child or anybody else. And then you have these dreams or these thoughts and you think, well, what in the world is wrong with me? The devil tells you it's you. It's been there since you were small. It must be so you become a Christian and you decide, well, amen. okay, it's still there. It must really have been me. And there are a lot of areas like that that you just say, well, that must be the old nature. We just got to keep it down. We'll pray enough. We'll read enough. We'll be spiritual enough. We'll just keep it under control. But I want you to know that those things aren't you. Those things are things with the enemy. It says in the scriptures that the Ah, oh, that the devil, the adversary, sows discord among the brethren. He comes and he plants discord, things that are going to make confusion in your life. He wants to confuse your emotions and your thoughts so that you're trying to serve God and can't understand why this other stuff is present. <coughs> and Jesus is all that time wanting to set you free and we just bury it and hide it and all that stuff. But what God did, and he used Michael to do it, I'll say that. Like I said, I wouldn't say it with him here much because I don't want to make no problems. But I'll tell you what, he made He made a hole big enough so that a couple of months later I could walk through it. He made a hole big enough in pride so that I could see that it could be I didn't know what I was walking through when I walked through, but I could walk through because I saw him walking through. I'm twice his age and supposed to be leading him, and here is God helping me. And because of it, I'm going to be a better person than I ever was in my life. I'm going to be perfect, absolutely not, but I've learned so much through watching God walk with him through his problems. God has given me the privilege of being there. Seeing new life come out of darkness. 
is he free from everything yet? No. Y'all pray for him. Y'all ain't through with everything yet either, are you? This morning we could have filled the aisle up here with people that needed what he was getting. You know it and I know it. I, it just, it's just the thing. But see, it's not one person. It's the devil hated all of us. And if he didn't do that to you, he did something else to you. If he didn't do it to you, he did it to somebody you know. Somebody you're married to. That's what the devil does. To kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And we can tell everybody everywhere, you got to get saved so you can have this life. And that's true, they got to get saved to get it. But you got to keep going to him to get more. You got to keep laying old stuff aside and pressing on to new. And the answer is not to cover it up and get bitter about it. Oh, that's so much of a, oh, so much bitterness that the Lord's had to deal with. Like I said, He took that away. He's been so good to do that for me. But then He left all those soft, hurting places again, where those memories will slip up and get you. See, and God's doing that for a lot of you, and you don't understand when you He says forgive, and you'll be forgiven. You forgive, and you say, "Oh, when I forgive, the memory will disappear." That'll help somebody right there if you'll hear it. Or oh, I'll forgive them. The pain will go. So that's what so confused me the other day. When I forgave and let go, the pain got worse. Because we don't understand that now the real pain is there. The shame, the guilt, the emotions, feeling violated, that is there. Right there, just it was there, just as strong. Only difference is where I didn't know Jesus when I was four, and I didn't know him when I was 15, and I didn't know him when I was whatever. You want to pick your numbers? I knew him when I was 15, but I sure didn't know him like I know him now. You hear me? It's just what I was telling you this morning. You got to forgive the kid. You just, just, you know, maybe you were saved. Maybe you wasn't, but you just didn't know. And the devil will hold you not knowing enough over your head. If you'd have knew enough, they wouldn't have died. If you could have prayed a better prayer, that wouldn't have happened. If you could have, you could have, you could have. Why didn't you ever tell anybody? That question has bothered me for a long time. Why didn't I tell anybody that happened to me? Was it because I was afraid they'd do something to the person? No. I was afraid of what they think. You hear me? What kept me from getting free? Afraid of what they think of me. Did they think because that happened to me, that's who I was? And y'all sit and talk, people sit and talk, all they talk about is that's so and so, that happened to them. You know, you got to be nice to them, that happened when they were a child. It's like your whole life revolves on and around something that happened to you. And that's just if you're lucky and didn't go and do it to somebody else. Because now you're the worst person on the planet that ever lived. You hear me? And I want you to know that Jesus loves everybody. Jesus died for them the way they are. And he loves them enough to change. And there's nobody on this planet, I don't care what they did to somebody, and I hate people that mess with kids. You hear me? I hate it from the bottom of my heart. But God loves everybody. And He can change anybody. He can break that cycle. If I didn't believe that, I'd just have to give up. Well, the one about the evil they're doing, that's the devil. He's working in them, yep. They might even be willing, yep, but they're so messed up because of what? See, the devil just started. I don't know where he started, but someplace way on back yonder, he decided, let me get you to mess with that when that one's a child, and that'll mess him up, and he'll mess with somebody else. You see, like Amway. And we sit around and hate who did things to us and never hate who really did it. It's the prayer. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Keep your kids away from people. Use your brain. Have a little sense. Anybody that thinks it can't happen in your family, just don't know. Now I know why Mama watched us like hawks. She just learned a little late. I know why she watched my younger brothers and my sister like a hawk. I know why she did it now. She just thinks she's overprotective. 
Then I used to think, well, she was just really smart because she knew to watch. And it just in the last month or so, I figured out that, no, she knew by experience. You hear me? What I want to encourage you to do is trust God. Love God, never let go of God. Whatever shows up in your life, whatever's happened to you in the past, the present, or the future, you hold on to Him. Make yourself a promise that you're going to let Him heal you. That before I leave this planet, I want to be free from this trash. I don't want to go out of here a victim. I want to go out of here a victor. I want to be above this and not under it. I want to be free. And right now I am. God has set me free from so much junk. Because now I, and the best thing was I found out it never was me to start with. It never was. It was just something the enemy tried to put on me. And did it so young in life that I felt like, see I always knew I hated even, the, I just hated things. Don't guess exactly what it is, because you don't know. See, things spread around. See, that's what that's what we don't understand. See, sometimes you'll say, well, I would never do that, because that was done to me, but then it shows up somewhere else. And I want you to know that Jesus is so much better than that stuff. Could I stand here and sing, He's so beautiful? Yes, because He is so beautiful. In spite of what was so ugly, that happened in my life and was put in my heart and implanted in me, I tell you what, he is so beautiful to me. And I love him more than I've ever loved him in my life because he always has loved and stood by me. He's good. The devil's bad, but he's good. Things that we've done may not be good and bad, but he is so wonderful. Even to me, if he, oh, you couldn't say that if you'd have been through what I've been through. I've been through a lot of stuff you've been through. And I ain't never told you. And because of that, you don't know that you can walk through the door too. That's what the Lord told me when he, when he delivered me. He told me that I could be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Come up here that Wednesday night, a day or so later, and felt so good and tried to do the scripture and couldn't even convey it. So you don't understand what a doorkeeper is. Doorkeeper is not somebody that stands at the door and says, Oh, greeter. It's not a greeter. A doorkeeper is a person that has the door and opens it and invites you to come in. He's the one that stands where he is and says, Come on past. Come past where I'm at. Come past where I've been through. Go on and be all that God has for you. On through. So that's what God has sent me to do. I may not never go do a whole lot of things other people go do, but I get to hold the door open for them. Come into the kingdom. Come get saved. Come love God. Well, you've done that. Well, that's fine. Let me tell you, God can take you through stuff that's happened in your life. Do I need to go get in therapy? I don't know. Do whatever you want, but I know Jesus is my therapist. He's done more in a month than I could have gotten psychiatry for years. I guarantee you he's good. Michael was a doorkeeper that helped me. I want to be a doorkeeper to help other people go through. See, a lot of people don't even know there's a door. Jesus said, I'm the door. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. And that's what I do. That's my, my I love God i got a strong desire in my heart to preach the gospel. I mean a stronger desire than I've ever had in my life. I, I've told you before, I used to not even like people. Then I got so God made it so I could like some Christians. Then he made it so I fell in love with some Christians. Then I found out I loved all of his people, whether I wanted to or not. And then he made me fall in love with worldly people. I told you that. He'd bring people by, and I just know that God loved And through dealing with this mess, he's made it so I now love every doggone one of them, even if I don't like them. Not just some of them now. I go by and I see them on the street, and I'm just overwhelmed with how much God loves them. What was keeping me from feeling that love? All that old stuff the devil put on when I was a kid. Shame.
showed back up a little later, showed back a little later, different manifestations all coming, all wondering, what is wrong with me? How could I be that evil at heart and love God? So you just don't tell people. You just hide it. If you tell somebody, you tell it this way. I've learned real quick how you tell anybody something. You tell them a little bit of it, and you wait and see how they handle it. The chances always come back to me that it just... They thought it was the Titanic, and it wasn't nothing but the tip of the iceberg, buddy. They had no idea what was left after you test those waters. And I'm going to tell you, people tell you the same thing when they're talking to you about Jesus. When they're seeing if God can help you, they'll tell you something you think it's their worst problem on the planet. And they're waiting to see if you love them, if you accept them, whether you'll still hug them. They're waiting to see if you'll touch them. They want to know, is there somebody that'll love me the way that I am, even if this is as bad as it gets? Do you hear me? And the truth always is it's worse than they're telling you. But they've got to know if you'll even accept that much. And if they see it in your eye that you couldn't handle it. If they tell when, they, when you put your hand out to them to touch it. If they can tell that it, you understand me? They're never going to tell you the rest of it. They do God that way. They come to God and they talk about sins like smoking or drinking or goofy little stuff that doesn't matter at all. You hear me? Because it's the stuff down. So they're trying to see if God can take them. Can God accept them the way they are seeing them? And church tells them, no. You quit that and you quit that and you quit that. And then, God. And the truth is they're testing it. Because if God can't take them with a beer and God can't take them with a doggone cigarette or, or whatever they're smoking, if God can't take them with tattoos and earrings and all that, how is God ever going to take them with well, the, the power of the you're cross carrying on the inside? Is a collection of original it's songs that the going. Lord has given me down through the years. And they can't it see has, God. Uh, all they can see. When I was a child, he made the mountains power. He has chosen me. All, all they of can these see, songs they see that look. Are and they're daring you. They're daring you to judge them. They're the daring Father you to put them down. They're daring you to tell if them. If you would like a copy. Because then they can say, see, there ain't nothing to I can pass. send you an MP3 copy. They can't handle this ear ring. This, this tongue Just ring. Or this eyebrow piercing. Email how they and ask. Handle. It's not What's professional it? production. They want it's runs, simple, organic, runs. rustic. Tell you it's impossible. If God don't help music us. or Jesus. But if He'll music. help me, I'm not looking down on a single one of them ever days. again. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care God if they got a witch follower stirring it with a doggone spoon. I'm gonna love them because God does, and they're not stirring that spoon in that witch pot because they want to. They're doing that because they've been messed with somewhere, somehow. hear me if this all bothers y'all you'll have to get rid of me and get somebody that had a perfect life because I don't have one you can get somebody that was raised in church and their family was sweet and everything else I guarantee you'll find out the same thing happened to them too they just be too refined to tell you. It makes a doorway. It makes a doorway so somebody can follow through. Sometimes, see, we don't understand what God does. God will have, some, have you tell some of your testimonies you'd rather not tell. He'd have, he'll have you say things, leave the door. And what happens is maybe nobody don't do nothing right that Maybe they don't run down to the altar at church. Maybe they don't run over and say, oh, oh, that's, that's me. No, what happens is God plants a seed. But if God could help them, if God could love them, if God could do that for if he could love them even while they still feel some of that stuff and are dealing with that stuff, if God could do that, what happens is it might be a month before they walk through the door. Just keep it open. You hear me? Keep 
the door open. Walk out of the mess you're in, thank God, but hold the door open because people are going to follow. Next week, next month, the month after, they're going to Next year, other people in your family, they're going to come, but you got to keep, you can't go through it and shut the door and say, that's my past, that's my, that was what happened to me. I uh, never go to open that door again because that very door God will use to bring people into freedom. Leave the door open. You've heard people say it, just leave the door open for me. I'll be in later. Yeah, go on with Jesus. Yes, grow in the Lord. But leave the door open for people to come. Because it might take a month. It might take three. It might take all summer. But what God did that morning in this church after everybody left, opened the door for me made it so that when I got brave enough and strong enough, and God strengthened me a lot. See, we don't always think like that. God strengthened me a lot before he let me face those things because they were just so hard to face. But I told him I couldn't tell a person on this planet. He just stood right there and looked at me. So I told him. I told Jesus all about it. But I tell you what, then I told him I wasn't ever going to tell nobody about it to him. He said, you don't have to till you want to. But I found to be free, I had to tell somebody. I'm going to talk about this the rest of my life. I certainly hope not. But I know that it's part of me coming out. Part of the light shining and good things happening. I don't think my brother even knows. You going to tell him? I don't think so. I don't think that's appropriate right now. I'm going to trust God. Going to tell everybody else in your family? No. I'm not going to tell anybody else. I've told my family that needs to know. But see, that's what the devil does. The devil stood there and he'll tell you, you can't tell anybody. And I remember thinking specifically, I sure can't tell my father. I can't tell my daddy. He finally just now treats me like a man when I'm this old. I can't be telling him what went on when I was a kid. And I bet you he knows. I bet you I wouldn't be telling him nothing he don't already know. But I've told you because I want you to be able to walk through the door too. If you don't walk through it tonight, don't you feel bad? If you couldn't walk through it this morning, don't you feel bad either? But there's a way out of guilt. There's a way out of shame. And it's to bring the stuff to Him. But if you do it by yourself, fine. If you come for prayer, that's fine. You can do it any way you want to do it. But I want you to know that God wants you free the time you leave this planet. He does not want you on your deathbed saying, I wish I'd have got rid of that stuff. How am I going to face Jesus with it? Because that shame is so real and that pain is so real that you wonder, could anybody love me if they knew? Could anybody? And Michael knows, I told him last week, and he loved me anyway. And that opened the door some more so I could tell somebody else. I'm just telling you, God is a good God. He's just been waiting on you to come closer. I'm going to close. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I'm going to leave the door open. I'm not going to lock it and say, I'm never going to tell anybody ever again. I'm not going to lock it and say, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to leave the door open, Father. Anybody else that needs you, needs to forgive and be forgiven. Michael said it this morning when he said, I hate myself for letting somebody put me in that position. Make it somebody want me. Make me feel like I wanted to die. 
have that much control that I'd want to die. But Lord, I've been there. I don't want to ever go back again and I come through it because you helped me, but I don't want to go back. I don't want anybody in here to get to that place where they'd rather die than go on and they know you. And then people say, well, if you die, you still go to heaven. I'd have to look at you, Lord, and know that I didn't do what you sent me to do. Don't let anybody in here listen to those lies. Don't let them hear that lie, Lord, that says it's too late. That they could never be what you want them to be. Touch them, Lord. Bless them, Jesus. Let them know how much you love them. We're trying to get other people fixed, and he wants to fix us. Heal them, Father, right where they sit any way you want to do it. When them tears come up and they think, oh, these memories are coming back, let them know that you're healing them, Lord. Let them know you brought them back up so that they could put them where they really belong, under the blood. Under the blood. Under the blood. Under the blood. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for opening doors. For opening doors. Father, opening doors in hearts, opening doors in minds. Ah, Lord just showed me a picture. There's people here who's got their door that's been barricaded so hard. It's got a big cross bar that comes down, locks that door. Some of you piled furniture up in front of the door. All this stuff. Afraid it's going to come through the door and get you. And God says you need to open the door. Face it. Not alone. The Lord says when you were a kid, you were alone. You didn't. You didn't have anybody to face it with you. But now you do. He promised to never leave you, never forsake you, to walk, to open the door and to look and shine the light and see what it really was. Really was. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.
once prayer would pray for anything. If not, we dismiss, you know, whatever y'all want to do. Yeah.